swinging 60s, a revolutionary double delta wing aircraft emerged as a daring leap into the unknown. With scant historical precedent, Saab's intrepid Swedish engineers embarked on an audacious quest to conquer the skies. Predictably, as the J-35 model neared completion, the aircraft faced a barrage of challenges during its maiden service years. Its inherent instability, a consequence of the double delta design, rendered landings a formidable feat, demanding manual finesse to maintain control. Unbeknownst to Sweden, this endeavor would unveil a breathtaking secret, the birth of the Cobra maneuver. In a heart-pounding moment, test pilots grappled with an unmanageable stall at high alpha, and in their struggle, discovered a game-changing solution. Swiftly countering the angle of attack, they transformed the aircraft into a spontaneous air brake, halting its velocity. Suddenly, the Saab 35 soared into the annals of aviation history as an undeniable icon. In the aftermath of World War II, the race to advance jet fighter technology was in full throttle and Sweden was determined to keep pace. Recognizing the imperative for a supersonic fighter capable of intercepting high-flying bombers and engaging other threats, the nation set its sights on the future. Autumn of 1949 saw the Swedish Air Force, in collaboration with the Defense Materiel Administration, unveil a visionary blueprint for a cutting-edge interceptor. Notably, this aerial guardian was tasked with the formidable mission of taking down enemy bombers within the treacherous transonic speed range. The initial benchmark set an audacious Mach 1.4 as the minimal top speed requirement. Fast forward to 1956. This standard was pushed further to a blistering Mach 1.7. And within three short years, an astonishing Mach 2.0 became the new gold standard. Beyond the need for blistering speed, the cockpit had to house a lone pilot, ready for combat in the harshest weather, day or night. What's more, it had to conquer rugged airstrips, armed to the teeth, poised to neutralize state-of-the-art jet bomber threats. To top it off, simplicity was key. Even novice conscripts needed to refuel and rearm this beast in under 10 minutes. Diverging from the American F-104 starfighters born in the same era, Sweden's brainchild had a distinctive mission, conquering reinforced public roads. In the thick of the Cold War, the Swedish defense devised a strategy to transform highways into wartime airbases, a safeguard against looming nuclear dangers. Saab eagerly embraced this challenge. Crafting an advanced interceptor that ticked all the boxes was a formidable feat for the brilliant minds behind it. Early studies illuminated the potential of a delta wing design in surmounting key challenges. The triangular delta wing bestowed numerous perks, boasting ample room for fuel storage and a robust structural framework, standing tall against conventional wing designs. Admittedly, delta wings had a drawback, heightened drag. But this extraordinary aircraft demanded an extraordinary solution. In pursuit of optimized aerodynamics, the designers extended the forward fuselage, albeit at the cost of added weight. The result? A groundbreaking, if not audacious, decision. The birth of the Double Delta Wing. The Double Delta Wing was a beacon of promise, but it remained an uncharted frontier. In an age before the luxury of computer-aided simulations, the engineers grappled with an arduous, time-consuming challenge. Unlocking the ideal solution entailed relentless wind tunnel trials to fathom the elusive behavior of this daring configuration. Prototypes offered some reassurance, but only real flight tests held the answers. So, with unwavering determination, a team of over 500 technicians, led by aviation pioneer Eric Bratt, birthed a small yet airborne marvel, the Saab 210 affectionately known as the Little Dragon. In January 1952, it took its maiden flight over the skies of Stockholm, 
proving its mettle. The triumphant results paved the way for a trio of full-sized prototypes, and three years down the line, the inaugural full-size Draken roared into existence, marking a new chapter in aviation history. The first prototype soared into the skies, a magnificent spectacle of innovation. Though lacking an afterburner, it completed its maiden flight with flying colors. Nevertheless, as recounted by Flight International, an unprecedentedly rigorous flight testing regimen awaited, demanding the aircraft to reveal its true prowess, extraordinary speed, astounding range, and mastery over intricate systems. Meanwhile, the second prototype, graced with the power of an afterburner, embarked on its inaugural flight, and in a twist of fate, inadvertently shattered the sound barrier during its ascent. It was an unequivocal testament to the Double Delta's prowess, not just a work of function, but an exceptional masterpiece. The swinging 60s bore witness to a revelation by Swedish Saab pilots. The awe-inspiring court parade, or Cobra maneuver, a meticulously choreographed superstall state. This technical marvel unfolded with lightning speed as the pilot deftly yanked the nose skyward, propelling the aircraft perpendicular to the Earth's surface. Then, defying gravity, the pilot transformed the airframe into a colossal air brake, decelerating at breakneck speed. Although not tailor-made for combat, this maneuver showcased the Saab 35's phenomenal agility. In fact, it outshone its single-engine jet peers, rendering the need for a tailplane obsolete, sculpting a streamlined and efficient profile. While the double delta wing commanded attention, the circular fuselage concealed a pioneering secret, foreshadowing the blended wing body concept. Meanwhile, the inner wing sported a large cord surface, stretching nearly to the engine intakes, optimizing high-speed performance. With an impressive 80-degree sweep at the leading edge of the inner wing and a 60-degree angle on the outer wing for lower speeds, the Double Delta delivered exceptional prowess. The Draken's cockpit was predominantly adorned with Swedish instrumentation with successive models ushering in notable upgrades like a revamped canopy and cutting-edge avionics crowned by a sophisticated three-axis autopilot. The standard setup entailed twin radio units, a high-velocity data link, and a pair of navigation systems. A noteworthy innovation was the introduction of the Q-Feel system, compensating for the stick's absence of natural feedback by generating artificial forces. The Draken's body comprised two distinct halves, meticulously bolted together. Up front, the forward section, housing the intake ducts and wings, boasted a cornucopia of essential components. Here, the fire control radar, cockpit, nose undercarriage, integral fuel reservoirs, and a plethora of critical systems found their home. In stark contrast, the rear section fused seamlessly with the inner wing, housing the beating heart of the machine, the power plant and afterburner. Additionally, it cradled bag-type fuel tanks, the principal landing gear, a dependable drogue parachute, and an impressive array of armaments. The Draken's firepower predominantly resided outside, donning up to four AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles suspended from sturdy hardpoints beneath both wings and the fuselage. Versatility was the name of the game, offering alternative payload options ranging from an assortment of bombs and rockets to an intriguing provision. The installment of twin 30mm cannons tucked within each inboard wing panel, with additional fuel tanks as a viable alternative. For reconnaissance missions, the J-35 morphed, adorning itself with an array of camera pods gracefully fitted beneath the fuselage. Through the years, the Draken evolved, embracing multiple enhancements, culminating in the J-35J of the late 1980s. Yet by this juncture, the torch had passed, and the Saab 37 Vegan had seized the mantle. Inexorably, the Draken's curtain call came in 1999, its service etched into history. A true luminary, it bequeathed a legacy woven with the threads of the iconic double-delta configuration, a concept 
that would resonate throughout Saab's future. Remarkably, the Draken's swan song extended into the mid-2000s, courtesy of a tenacious service life extension program, ultimately drawing to a close after an astounding half-century reign. A testament to its enduring legacy as an experimental aircraft that defied all expectations. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed learning about the remarkable Saab J-35 Draken. To keep up with our latest aviation stories, make sure to subscribe to General Furrington and explore our other fascinating videos on our documentary channel. And don't forget to hit the like button and stay tuned for more exciting content.